the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, to your fellow redeemed by the blood of Christ. Your God has been good to you. In fact, he's been so good to you that it is impossible for you to count all the blessings that he has given to you. You could sit here from this point forward until your Thanksgiving meal later tomorrow and try to write down all the blessings that God has given to you. And first of all, you wouldn't run out of blessings. And secondly, you wouldn't even be able to remember them. For your God is so good to you that he just showers you with blessings day after day, week after week, month after month, year after year. He just provides a constant deluge of blessings that rain down upon you. It's why every Thanksgiving you don't have trouble thinking of what you're thankful for. Whether this past year was a great year for you or a year you would like to forget, your God has still been so good to you, providing you with more blessings than you can even count. But out of all the blessings that your God has so graciously given to you, perhaps none of the blessings are greater than the one we're going to focus on here this evening. And by the way, It's the same blessing that King Solomon and all the Israelites were thanking their God for at the dedication of the temple 3,000 years ago. For one of the greatest blessings your God gives to you, it's that he's here. He's here, physically present, right here and right now, and every time you gather around the word and sacraments. That is one of the greatest blessings that God has given to you, Why? Well, think about what happens when you're in the presence of a loved one. Maybe especially if that loved one lives far away and you only get to see them around holiday times. Think of how much joy fills your heart when you get to be in the presence of a loved one, when your entire family is gathered around a table. Think of how comforting it is when you're in the presence of a loved one, especially if you're going through a rough time and that loved one can be there and give you a hug. Truly, it's a wonderful blessing from God to be in the physical presence of a loved one. How much more isn't it a wonderful wonderful privilege to be in the presence of your God? Because your God can give you more joy than a loved one. He can give you more comfort than a loved one because your God has the power to do something that a loved one can't do, something that gives you the greatest joy and greatest comfort in all the world. Your God is... When he's physically present, he has the power to forgive your sins. He has the power to make you worthy enough for eternal life in heaven. That's why he's physically present. It's to forgive your sins and give you eternal life in heaven. And as proof, let's look at our text from the dedication of the temple from 1 Kings chapter 8. For notice that this text starts off with the Ark of the Covenant being brought to the temple. Now, let's review a little bit. The Ark of the Covenant was made at Mount Sinai at God's direction, and the Ark of the Covenant was always the symbol of the physical presence of God. This is where God dwelled on the mercy seat in between the two wings of the cherubim on the Ark of the Covenant. That was their visual reminder of God's presence. And from Mount Sinai until our text, the Ark of the Covenant was in the tabernacle, which wasn't a permanent place. You see, the tabernacle was designed to be moved. That way, as they journeyed from Mount Sinai into the Promised Land, they could move the tabernacle and move the Ark along with them. But now, 400 years after entering the Promised Land, King Solomon had just finished building this temple this magnificent structure that was to be the dwelling place of the ark and the dwelling place of God himself. And this temple was absolutely beautiful. It was filled with gold everywhere. Since this temple was to be the dwelling place of God, where God's physical presence would be, since this was to be the dwelling place of the ark, they spared no expense when building this temple. 
It had to be absolutely marvelous to see this magnificent and golden structure with your eyes. But notice in our text from 1 Kings chapter 8 that it wasn't the magnificent golden structure that caused King Solomon and all of Israel to be filled with joy and comfort and to thank and praise their God. But what caused them to be so full of thanks at the dedication of the temple? It was when the Ark of the Covenant came with all the holy vessels. That's what brought them such joy and comfort. That's what caused them to thank their God. That was the focus of Solomon's prayer. Because that assured them that God himself was present in that temple, proven by the fact that the entire, that a cloud came and filled it up with smoke. Yes, the presence of God at the temple was what really comforted the Israelites and filled their hearts with thanksgiving. Why? Well, it's because the Israelites knew why God was present at that temple. He was there to forgive their sins. And while we could go through every holy vessel and show how it was a picture of Christ, a picture of how God would forgive their sins, every holy vessel in the temple showed that truth. I just want to focus on one, and that's the Ark of the Covenant, specifically by noting what was inside of the Ark of the Covenant. For listen to what was inside the Ark. We read, There was nothing in the Ark, except the two stone tablets which Moses had placed there at Horeb, Mount Sinai, when the Lord made a covenant with the people of Israel when they came out of the land of Egypt. You see, at this time, all that was in the Ark of the Covenant was the Ten Commandments, the law. And if it's just you and the Ten Commandments, you and the law, that's a terrifying thing. Because these Ten Commandments, this law of God, it should kill you. You've all disobeyed those Ten Commandments, and so have I. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, as St. Paul says in Romans. So if it's just you and the Ten Commandments, you and the law, with no barrier in between, that's a terrifying thing, for these Ten Commandments are etched in stone. They are unyielding. And so if it's just you and the Ten Commandments, these Ten Commandments would put you to death. It's what you deserve when it's just you and the law. But notice it wasn't just an Israelite and a law. The Ten Commandments were inside of something. There was a barrier between the Ten Commandments and the people, and that was the Ark of the Covenant, the physical presence of God. And isn't that a marvelous barrier? For you see, on top of the Ark of the Covenant is what is called the mercy seat. It's a golden slab on top of it. And that's where the high priest on the Day of Atonement would sprinkle all the blood, the blood of the sacrifice. And it's that blood of the sacrifice that appeased God's wrath. For it's that blood of the sacrifice that would forgive all of Israel's sins against those Ten Commandments. Now you see how all that's a picture of Jesus, right? It's not hard. For not only is he the perfect sacrifice whose blood pays for your sins, whose blood washes away your sins, but on top of that, isn't it marvelous that Jesus is the barrier between you and the law? He's the one who fulfilled the law perfectly. That way the law doesn't kill you because it killed him instead. And so instead of being terrified by this law, knowing that it should kill you through Christ, you now have the motivation to try to fulfill this law by giving glory to God in everything you think and say and do. It's one of the marvelous truths that the Ark of the Covenant was proclaiming. And if that's a marvelous truth, that there's now this barrier between you and the law, God himself, who takes the curse of the law on himself so that it does not come against you, if if that's one of the things that the Ark of the Covenant was proclaiming, do you see why King Solomon and all of Israel were so excited and filled with joy when it was brought into the temple? 
Do you see why they were so comforted? Do you see why they were so filled with thanks over what God would do that they literally offered hundreds of thousands of animals as a sacrifice, reminding them of the great sacrifice that God was going to do for them? It wasn't just because it was such a magnificent structure that they were rejoicing. They were rejoicing that God was present. He was present to fulfill all the promises he had made. He was present to forgive their sins and give them eternal life. That's why they were so full of thanks. My dear Christian friends, I pray that's why you are so full of thanks and so happy and so comforted every time you step into this building as well. For it's true that this building is probably not as magnificent to the eyes as the temple was. We don't have gold everywhere. We don't have all these holy vessels. We don't have the Ark of the Covenant having the very Ten Commandments that Moses brought down from the altar. And for better or for worse, we aren't killing hundreds of thousands of animals, reminding us of the sacrifice of the Lord. Yes, this structure is probably not as glorious to the eyes as the temple in Jerusalem was. In fact, you can probably find more glorious to the eyes churches in Lee Summit, let alone throughout the entire world. But that's okay. To me and to you who are members or whatever church you're a member at, the church you are a member at is the most glorious place in the world. There's nothing more glorious. Why? God's here. He's here just as he was in the temple of Jerusalem. You know that because you hear real, actual words with your ears, and you see and feel real, actual water every time there's a baptism, and you see and taste and smell real, actual bread and wine, which is the very body and blood of Christ. Yes, you are certain that God himself is here, present, just as he was at the temple of Jerusalem 3,000 years ago, and that's why this is such a glory glorious place, just as glorious as the temple of Jerusalem was. It's why it's a place where you give thanksgiving to God. It's because God himself is present so that he can be that barrier between you and the law, so that he can forgive all the times that you have broken the Ten Commandments, so that he can make you worthy enough for eternal life in heaven. That's why he's here. And if that's what's happening in this place and churches faithfully preach the word and administer the sacraments, if that's what's happening here and in all those different churches, well, then how could we not be filled with joy every time we think of this place? And how could we not be comforted any time we walk through its doors? And how could we not thank our God, not just on Thanksgiving Day, but really any time we think of this place, a place where we get to go to be in the very presence of God, who through word and sacrament is coming down to you, not to punish you, but so that he can be that barrier between you and the law, so that he can forgive your sins and give you eternal life. If that's not a blessing to thank our God for, I don't know what is. And so tomorrow, as you celebrate Thanksgiving Day, yes, you will have ample reasons to thank your God. You have more blessings than you can even imagine. You're not at a loss to think about what you're very thankful for. But my prayer is among all the other blessings that God has richly and daily provided for you, that you thank God that he's here. You thank God that he is physically present in the word And in the sacrament, I pray that you can remember to thank your God for that marvelous blessing. For since he is physically present here, wherever his word and sacrament is, this is a place where you can be filled with joy. It's a place where you can be comforted just as King Solomon in Israel was at the temple. Because this is a place where you are forgiven of all your sins and you are made worthy enough to dwell forever in heaven. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We continue by singing our next hymn of thanksgiving, praising our God for his marvelous blessings.